Hello, my name is Sean Stafford, and we are in week one of our study of the book of First Timothy, and we are going to spend the next six weeks covering one chapter per week of this amazing letter written by Paul to his protege, to his true spiritual son in the faith, Timothy. And to go along with each Sunday teaching, we're going to do a weekly devotional in which we cover some of the verses not covered in the Sunday sermon. And it's our hope that you will join us each Sunday and each week to unpack the book of 1 Timothy. But our greatest hope, our, our greatest prayer in the heart of every leader here at Cornerstone is that you would spend time daily in God's word. So we encourage you not to only join us on Sunday and, and during the week for the devotional, but to spend time each day reading along through the book of Timothy with us. We believe here at Cornerstone that God's word is authoritative. It's timeless and it's never changing. We believe that all of scripture is God breathed and helps teach us and lead us and guide us and train us and equip us to be servants of the Lord and to do the work that he has prepared for us to do. On Sunday, Pastor Joey, he gave an amazing message on 1 Timothy chapters 1 through 17. So today we are going to be unpacking verses 18 through 20. But if you missed Pastor Joey's sermon, you can jump on to the Cornerstone LV app or the Cornerstone LV podcast, and you can check out that message. I encourage you to do that before you jump into this Devo. With all that being said, let's open up our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, and here we go. Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you. Based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you fight well in the Lord's battles Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their consciences, and as a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Hymenius and Exalander are two examples. I threw them out and handed them over to Satan so they might not learn, so they might learn not to blaspheme God. In the opening verses of this chapter, Paul urges Timothy to keep at his task. He gives him a strong word of encouragement to, to stay, to remain there in Ephesus. And this strong exhortation from Paul to Timothy is likely because Timothy was wanting to give up. And there might have been a lot of reasons why Timothy wanted to pack his bags, wanted to head out of town, and wanted to give up on his ministry there in Ephesus. Maybe he was intimidated by following Paul's ministry. Paul might have casted a big shadow. Paul would have had big shoes to fill. And maybe Timothy just didn't feel he measured up. Timothy seemed to be timid or, or a little bit more reserved by nature. So maybe Timothy didn't feel up to the challenge. Maybe Timothy questioned his calling. Maybe he wasn't confident. Maybe he didn't feel absolutely sure in what God had called him to do. And maybe Timothy was just frustrated disheartened, discouraged from the regular challenges that can come from ministry. You see, Ephesus would have been a difficult place, a hard place to minister to. It was the leading city in the richest region of the Roman Empire. It was a large city. It was a trade city. It was affluent. There was a lot of wealth. It was very diverse. The city of Ephesus was very pagan. There was over 50 different temples for different goddesses and gods that they would worship. There was a lot of occult practices, and it was a hub for new philosophical ideas and teaching. Ephesus was like a, a spiritual buffet. You could pick the god or goddess you wanted to worship. You could pick the truth you wanted to follow, and you could live life by whatever philosophy you chose. And Timothy, he was charged with the task to declare the truth and to stop anyone who teaches anything contradictory to the truth of the gospel. And there were times when Timothy, he didn't feel up to the task and he wanted to give up. Do you ever feel like you want to give up 
And I'm not talking about giving up on your faith, but do you ever feel like you want to give up on the task God has given you? Do you ever feel like you want to walk away from what he's calling you to do? Maybe you don't feel worthy enough. Maybe you don't feel like you have what it takes. Maybe you feel timid or afraid, or maybe you feel unsure about your calling. Maybe today you feel frustrated, disheartened, discouraged, because sometimes ministry can just be hard. If that's you, I encourage you to keep at the task, to remain, to keep fighting the good fight of faith. And in verses 18 through 19, Paul gives Timothy and he gives us three weapons I believe we can use in keeping in keeping and fighting the good fight. Weapon number one, remember who has called you. Verse 18, Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they help you fight well in the Lord's battles. When Paul sensed that Timothy was becoming weary in his task, he reminded him that he had been called by God through the prophetic words spoken over him. Remember, it is God who has appointed you. It is God who has placed you where you are at. It is God who has called you. And if God has called you, he has equipped you. Just as he equipped Moses to lead the Israelites, just as he gave Esther the courage and the boldness to stand before the king, just as God equipped Peter, an untrained and un educated Galilean fishermen to be the rock of his church. God has equipped you for the task he has assigned you to. And God does not call us and then just leave us to fend for yourself. No, God is with you and he will enable you through the power of his Holy Spirit to complete your assignment. If God has called you, God has equipped you. Weapon number two, cling to your faith. What is faith? Faith is is complete trust and dependence on God. Timothy, he had to trust that God was in control. Timothy had to know and believe that if God was in it, God would see him through. So when Timothy felt discouraged or timid or questioned his calling, Paul tells him to cling to your faith, hold on to it tightly. When you begin to serve the Lord, you have to be ready. You are entering the battlefield. There are going to be challenges and difficulties, and there is only one who can carry you through, God. So trust him, hold on to him, cling to him with everything you've got. Weapon number three, keep your conscience clear. We are in a battle. Timothy was in a battle And that means our enemies, they are going to attack. You see, the enemy, he wants to discredit God. He wants to defeat God, but he has already lost that battle in overwhelming fashion. So you know what he does? Because he can't discredit God. He can't defeat God. He comes after God's people. And the enemy, he wants to discredit you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to discredit your story, discredit your calling. He wants to destroy your ministry. And one of the ways he does that is is he distracts us from the truth and he entangles us in sin. Do not give the enemy any extra ammo to attack you with. So as verse 5 tells us, conduct yourselves with love. That comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and genuine genuine faith. We are to live a life that is worthy of our calling. And our words and our deeds should always be in alignment. Simply put, we are to practice what we preach. Now it seems some there in the church of Ephesus haven't held to the truth of the gospel. They haven't held to their faith. And as a result, their consciences are no longer clear. Let's close with verse 19 and 20. Verse 19, cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their consciences. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Hymenius and Alexander are two examples 
I threw them out and handed them over to Satan so they might learn not to blaspheme God. The sad reality is that there are going to be Christians that give up, that no longer hold to the faith, and that yield to the enemy. And that's why it's so important you don't, that you cling to your faith, that you continue to declare the truth of the gospel of God's grace, and that you never yield, you never give up. I encourage you today to keep at your task, stay, remain, and keep fighting the good fight. Remember, if God has called you, he has equipped you. Cling to your faith, trust and depend on God, and keep your conscience clear. Live a life that is worthy of your call.